and welcome to my Physical Science Online Video Lecture Supplement Series. Today's video is the uh, worked examples that I'm going to do for the set of lecture notes on Chapter 1, which pertains to measurements. And since this is the first set of worked examples, I wanted to give a little bit of a introduction to what this set of videos will look like. Basically with each set of uh, notes that I post in my Blackboard course for the physical science class, I tend to try and work a few examples. And basically there are some examples that are within the notes that have been pulled from the textbook that we're using which is the Shipman, Wilson, Higgins, and Torres Introduction to Physical Science. We're actually going to be using the 14th edition of that text, although the 13th edition is also acceptable. Um, what's going to happen here is that in addition to some of the examples that are basically placed in the textbook itself, I've come up with a few examples of my own, which I'm going to work through in this set of videos. And what I'll do is I'll present the um, example, the question, and then I will work through the solution to get to an answer. And then I'll move to the next question and so on until I've worked through all of these examples that I've added into the notes. And so these videos are meant to uh, basically let you see just how it is that you should go about working a given example with this course. And to a lesser extent, I may have some additional commentaries that I'm adding. Um, in a sense, these videos serve as a sort of lecture for the week, although the lecture notes are a bit more extensive than just the examples. So for right now, you should be watching these videos on how to work the examples in addition to reading through your notes, in addition to reading through your book, and in addition to attempting to do the homeworks that I assign each week. So we can begin with example number one. Uh, point one, and what it asks is, what is the density of a block of ice whose volume is 30 liters and whose mass is 27,600 grams? In order to answer this question, it's worth uh, flipping back through the notes, and, and this is something that I will do at times when answering these questions in the worked examples. I'll uh, point you to a page in the notes or a slide in the notes on which the relevant equation or the relevant table or whatever is located. So in this case the important equation for us to use is on this slide about density. And it basically says density is mass per unit volume. That is rho represents density is m that represents mass divided by v represents volume. So to answer this question what we end up doing is we uh, take the uh, density rho, set it equal to mass over volume, and we have to identify what the mass is and what the volume is. Well this one right here says the mass is 27,600 grams, so this represents m. This part right here says the volume is 30.0 liters, so this represents volume v. And so this density is going to be given by 27,600 grams divided by 30.0 liters. So what we do is we uh, grab a calculator and I will typically use the calculator which is on my computer just so you can see me doing it. Uh, doing the calculation that is, so 27,600 and then we're going to divide that by 30.0 and what it gives us is 920. So we write our answer here as uh, 
920 uh, grams per liter. So basically what you can do by the way to double check your answers even without watching this video is that in your notes it'll say something like answer colon and then dot. Um, for some sets of notes I've put this in. Basically what that means is that you can highlight this set of notes. So let me actually open this in the PDF file. All right, so then if I scroll down to that particular example in the set of notes, um, scroll, 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 whoops, too far. It says that you can get the answer by highlighting from between the colon and the period. So you can see that there's something exists here. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to open a notepad file or a word file or what have you and if you paste it then the text that's hidden shows up the density is 920 grams per liter so I'm only gonna do this this one time just to show you what it is that I mean I'm not going to do this after every example but just to show you that the answer is actually embedded in your notes I just wrote it in the same color text as the background is and so you basically need to paste it in something like notepad so it will show up or paste it in something like a word file and then change the color. Our second example says that we have a tank of water which has these dimensions 60 centimeters maybe that's 60 centimeters deep by 80 wide by 100 long for example and it says that the total mass of the tank and, and that is including the water and whatever else is in it is 485,000 grams and what it wants to know is what is the average density the reason why it says average density is because the water might be more dense than the grass it might be less dense than the rock etc but for getting an average density you can still use the same procedure we've been using which is take the total mass divide by the total volume alright so once again we basically use that the average density is the mass per unit volume m over v so this right here would represent the average density it's the thing we're trying to find this right here is the mass 485,000 grams represents the mass the volume we're going to have to calculate using these dimensions so this stuff give uh, or gives the volume and so what we use is uh, volume V uh, is equal to length times width times height it doesn't actually matter what order we multiply these things in so what this is basically saying is that the volume part is 60 centimeters times 80 centimeters times 100 centimeters so we can pull out the calculator again and we have here 60 times 80 times 100 and the answer is 480,000 so our volume therefore is V equals 480,000 uh, cubic centimeters so we can now plug these things in to this density equation and what we have is that the average density is 485,000 grams divided by 480,000 cubic centimeter and we could for example to make our lives a little easier just cut out the thousand from both top and bottom so pull up the calculator uh, basically we end up with 485 divided by 480 
and what you're left with is 1.010416 repeating. And we have to round this off to something. Um, obviously, it would be a bit of a pain to have to write all of this answer out exactly. It's even a bigger pain when you realize that this calculator has a bit more precision than maybe the calculator that you're holding if you're not using the computer calculator. It's got a different precision than a, a graphing calculator or a standard scientific or etc. So we're going to have to round. And the way that we pick how to round this thing off to is that we use uh, some rules that go of significant figures. So what significant figures are is basically gives us some method of being consistent in how we express our numbers. And what, what happens is that we started off with a certain number of significant figures. If you look back on the uh, problem given, it looks to me like we started off with three significant figures for most of our numbers, four for one of them, and we don't really know how many significant figures there are in the mass. A significant figure basically is any number that is not a zero. Any digit that's not a zero is significant. Any digit that is a zero that is between two non-zeros is significant. And any zeros that are trailing to the right of a decimal point with no... Um, additional numbers after them or if they are between two non-zero numbers those are the significant figures so uh, we'll look at significant figures a little more later uh, basically what they're used for is when you get some number on your calculator for example this one gives us a bunch of digits from dividing 6.8 by 1.67 you need to know how many of these digits should I actually keep or how many should I actually record when writing my answer. And the quick rule of thumb is that you report only as many significant figures in the result as there are in the quantity with the least number of significant figures. So if there's three in one of yours then you should round off to three significant well, looking at this example, um, you could look at these numbers and see there's three significant figures here, there's three significant figures here, there's four significant figures here, and there's somewhere between three and six significant figures here. We don't know if these zeros are significant or not. So with that being said, the, the one with the least number is, if nothing else, one of these two, three significant figures. So we should round this guy off to 1.01. .01. So therefore, our density here ends up being 1.01 .01 grams per cubic centimeter. So um, there's the answer to that example. Example 1.3 asks us, um, how large of a tank we would need in order to store 7,500 grams worth of salt water. This is given that we have a density of salt water 1.025 grams per cubic centimeter. So in this case the question we're being asked is how large is the tank going to be? That actually corresponds to the volume. We're given, in this case, a density, rho, and we're given a mass, m. So we can rearrange this equation. And, and the way that we can do that, actually, is that we can multiply both sides by the volume. So we're going to multiply this side by volume, and therefore we're going to multiply this side by volume. Then we're going to divide both sides by the density. And so what you can see is that there's going to be some cancellations. These two densities will cancel, and likewise these two volumes will cancel. And so what you end up left with after you've done that is that the volume 
is the mass divided by the density. So that means that you have 7,500 grams of salt. You're dividing by 1.025 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. And so what you end up getting here is that you have uh, a need for a calculator. So 7,500 divided by 1.025 gives us 7,317. And again, we don't actually know how many significant figures are in this right here. So I'll write out uh, maybe that, assuming that all four are significant, just so that we have them in case we need them later. Um, typically, these zeros would not count as significant but the fact of the matter is you don't actually know whether they're significant or not. So um, we'll, we'll pretend like they are for now until told otherwise. And that's usually the, the right way to approach uh, significant figures here. So therefore we have 7,317 cubic centimeters and that is the volume. All right, so let's revisit a couple of those examples. Um, example 1.1, basically we ended up answering originally that the density of the block of ice was 27,600 grams per 30.0 liters or 920 grams per liter. Now this thing is saying answer in units of kilograms per meters cubed. By the way, when you take my quizzes on Blackboard, oftentimes this is the form that the question will be in. It'll ask you a question, it'll give you some units, and it will say answer in units of whatever, in this case kilograms per cubic meter. So in a sense, this is a good example to show you just how it is that you should answer those kinds of questions so that Blackboard doesn't automatically count them wrong. So what we had found previously is that the density was 920 grams per liter. The thing is that this now wants the answer in units of kilograms per meter cubed. So if you were to go to Blackboard and try to write in 920 grams per liter, you may get the question wrong. Certainly you will if you type in the grams per liter. So what we need to do is convert our grams per liter into kilograms per cubic meter. All right, so how many kilograms are there in a gram? And how many liters are there in a cubic meter? Well, let's open up our notes. First of all, in our notes, we have this list of commonly used prefixes. And if you open your book up and go to Appendix 1, there's a lot more prefixes. The one that we're interested in here is this one right here, kilo, which is a thousand times the base. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. So if we wanted to convert this into kilograms per liter, we would therefore take the grams and we would have one point zero 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 kilograms. It actually has infinitely many significant figures because it's an exact conversion. One kilogram per 1,000 grams. And so what you see here is that the grams are going to cancel. And if you put this into your calculator, what it basically does is you're dividing 920 by 1,000. So you have a decimal point that's here. It's like moving the decimal point over three spaces you end up with 0 0.920 kilograms per liter. So at this point, our density is 0 0.920 kilograms per liter. All right, now we need to figure out how to convert liters into cubic meters. Well, the next slide in our notes tells us about the liter, which is basically, it is a metric unit, but it's not a standard one in the sense of it, it breaks from the mold of using meters strictly. And what a liter is, is that it is a volume of liquid in a 0.1 meter or 10 centimeter cube.
That means that it's the volume of liquid that takes up a space of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's a thousand cubic centimeters. So how much space does that actually take up in meters? Well, you'd have to go 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1. So this thing right here, we're basically going to multiply 0. Uh, Let's see, uh, one liter, excuse me, we gotta have one liter on top to cancel, and that's divided by 0 0.1 meters by 0 0.1 meters by 0 0.1 meters. Again, this is an exact conversion. All right, so if I take those 0 0.1s, 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, that's on the bottom, so I can hit 1 over x. That means I'm going to multiply by 1,000. So this 0 0.920 has to be multiplied by 1,000. And what that means is that we actually end up with 920 kilograms per liter. So that means, among other things, that uh, 1, uh, excuse me, this is not per liter, this is per uh, cubic meter. What that means, among other things, is that one gram per liter is the same thing as one kilogram per cubic meter. All right, so this is the answer. In Blackboard, if you have, um, if you were to take a quiz on Blackboard that was written like this, you'd be faced with a little box like this that you're supposed to enter your answer to. And this is all that you'll see is this box. So mentally, what you should be doing here is saying something like the density is, here's the box, and then outside the box, kilograms per cubic meter. So now you have to enter your number, your answer, into the box. And so the only thing that you'll type is what goes into this box. So what you'll type into Blackboard with taking this quiz is the 920. So you just write 920 and then you're done. If you put anything else in this box, it's going to be wrong. So now you know something about the format of the answers that you've got to put into Blackboard. And I'm telling you this because if you know it now, it'll save you a little bit of stress, frustration, and grief later. It also saved me from having to go through and manually grade an extra set of quizzes. I do go through and check grades, but eventually I stop giving you points back when you get, you know, an answer wrong because you're entering the wrong format. You're going to have to do this time and time again in the lecture, and if you're also taking my lab class, you're going to do this time and time again in the lab class. All right, for our next example, we're going to actually revisit example 1.3. That was the one that says salt water has a density of 1.025 grams per cubic meter, uh, cubic centimeter. How large of a tank would you need to hold 7.50 kilograms of salt water in gallons? So we've got to convert the cubic centimeters answer that we got before to the gallons answer. Also, worth noting, we now have the a way to figure out how many significant figures there are in the answer. Before we had 7,500 grams. Well, 7,500 grams is the same as 7.5 kilograms. And because this says 7.50, we know that there are three significant figures. This zero is basically a trailing zero to the right of the decimal place, which means that it is significant. So Therefore, we can now uh, approach this question by converting into gallons, and we know that we should end up with three significant figures. All right, so I have written out the answer to the original question. Note that we had originally recorded uh, that it was 7,317 cubic centimeters. Well, we have to round that off to three significant figures, become 7,320. Um, but the question is, how much of this 
uh, how, how big is this in gallons? So we've got to convert this into gallons somehow. Well, let's open up our note. Coming here to this slide on the liter, it basically says that a liter is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters or a thousand cubic centimeters. So we can convert the cubic centimeters into liters by basically noting that one liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. So we see that there's going to be a unit cancellation for the centimeters and the centimeters cubed. The problem is that what we wanted this thing in is gallons. So we're going to have to somehow convert liters into gallons. Well, on the next slide of our notes, it says that a liter is slightly more than a quart. One quart equals 0.946 liters, or one liter is 1.06 quarts. Now, quarts is in the U.S. customary system, as is gallons. So from here, we can maybe convert to gallon. In the event that you have forgotten that a quart is the same thing as one quarter of a gallon, there was a slide back in the lecture notes that is basically talking about how convenient the base 10 is for metric system as opposed to the bases that get used in the British system. Um, now, as an aside, I will note that quite a few of these things in the British system are really not that inconvenient. I mean, the mile is maybe a little bit of an odd um, uh, conversion. But a number of these others are really not that inconvenient once you understand what they're doing. For example, a quart is 32 ounces. Well, 32 is just 2 raised to the power of 5. A gallon is 4 quarts. That's also 2 raised to the power of 7. So this volume system actually is kind of in a uh, powers of 2 system. There's 16 ounces to a pint, two pints to a quart, four quarts to a gallon. Um, a number of the other measurements that you end up with in the British system are actually very simple uh, to use in as much as, for example, a foot is 12 inches. 12 is easily divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And for that matter, 8 and 9 go in fairly nicely, as does 10. Really the only two numbers in that entire range between 1 and 12 that don't divide nicely into 12 are 7 and 11. So for example, uh, 12 divided by 8 is going to give you 1.5. 12 divided by 9 is going to give you 1.3 repeating or 1 and 1 third. Only 12 divided by 7 will give you something inconvenient and 12 divided by 11 will give you something inconvenient. Everything else is easy to do. Um, that's kind of a big aside though. I will say that the British system or the US customary system which is the modern version of that is often preferred by engineers even though scientists prefer the metric system and, and I actually prefer working in the metric system when trying to solve problems but using the British system is sometimes nice for doing simpler tasks like building a house uh, or um, etc. Most engineers that I've spoken to will will roundly say that they prefer the uh, British system because it's easier to work with for doing quick conversions and it's the only system that you could easily construct yourself if you're stuck alone on an island. So with all that is said as an aside you can see that a gallon is four quarts. If you can't see that then you can see that a quart is 32 ounces and a gallon is 128 ounces. So this is what we end up with as our full conversion factor. So if we pull open the calculator, we have 7,320 uh, divided by 1,000. Okay, then that's going to get multiplied by 1.06. Uh, 
that gets us to here. Then we're going to multiply that by 32. Then we're going to divide that by 128. And what we end up with is 1.9398. So basically 1.94 uh, when rounded to three significant figures. So V is equal to 1.94. Now note that if we did not round this original number up here, we might get a slightly different answer. So if we start from the 7500 over 1.025, what are we going to get? Well, 7500 divided by 1.025 gives us this number. Okay, then we're going to divide that by another 1,000. That's this part of the conversion. Then we're going to multiply by 1.06. That's to convert from uh, liters into quarts. We're going to multiply that by 32. That's to get from quarts to ounces. Then we're going to divide that by 128. That's to get from uh, ounces to gallons. We end up with 1.9390. So not much of a difference. In fact, when rounded out to only three significant figures, we get the same number, 1.94 gallons. So the answer here is 1.94 uh, gallons, G-A-L. So again, if you're going to enter this into Blackboard, you would say something like the volume is uh, blank gallons. And so you would enter into this blank space a 1.94. Okay, this next example is as much to, you know, we've been doing these volume density mass conversions and we're going to do another one but th the point of this example is more to show you another thing with uh, blackboard which is how should you enter a number which is in scientific notation when you go to enter a number into blackboard so this example says that you've got a water tower like this one uh, we assume that it's completely cylindrical and that it has a radius of 4 meters and a height of 8 meters. And so it wants to know how much mass of pure fresh water can we hold. We're going to answer in grams using scientific notation. All right, so I've basically redrawn the water tower as a cylinder. And the reason why is um, basically we're being asked how much water or how much mass of water so that would be M can be held in a cylindrical water tower of radius 4 that's R and height 8 that's H uh, we want the answer in grams we gotta use scientific notation etc well the, the the thing of this is that again we can use that density is mass per unit volume and we can rearrange that by solving for the mass and what you end up with is that mass is density times volume. Well the volume of a cylinder is given by pi times the radius squared times the height. In other words it's given by the area of this circular cross-section multiplied by the height, where the area is pi r squared. Okay, so what is the density of fresh water before we continue? Well, we're given a list of three liquids and their densities. The publisher of the textbook uh, gave me these three and I guess they thought it was important that you know pure water, seawater, and well P. Um, in any case the one we actually want is pure water 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter. So we end up with something that looks like this. Um, the total mass is going to be the density, so 1.00 grams per 
centimeter cubed times pi, which is a an irrational number, 3.1415926, and then ad infinitum, uh, times the radius. Well, the radius is 4.0 meters. And since we we have this in centimeters cubed, we might as well just convert it to centimeters right here. So that's times 100 centimeters per one meter. And then that number is actually squared. And then that is going to be times the height, which is 8.0 meters. And again, we'll convert to centimeters by multiplying by 100 centimeters per one meter. All right, so this is giving us that the approximate mass is, if we can get our calculator out, we have uh, basically one times pi times, now we'll just stick this in parentheses, four times 100, and that has to be squared times another 8 times 100. And so you end up with this number right here. 400, uh, let's see, 402, 123, 859. So 402,123,859. So how many significant figures should we have? Well, we have only two significant figures here and here. So we're going to be limited to just two significant figures. So this basically ends up rounding off to 400 million. So the two significant figures that we're going to end up with, I'll write this thing out as uh, 400 uh, million. And then I'm going to go ahead and underline what my two significant figures are. These are the significant figures. Now the question says that not only do we need to have the correct number of significant figures, but we also need to uh, use scientific notation. So if we're going to use scientific notation, what does that look like? Well, uh, t traditionally how you would do that is you would take um, you'd say, okay, suppose there's a, a decimal point right here. So we're going to have 4.0, that's my two significant figures, times 10 to the power of however many jumps we have to make with this decimal point to get 4.0 from 400 million. So there's one jump, two jumps, three jumps, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'd have 4.0 times 10 to the eight um, um, grams. Okay, so 4.0 times 10 to the eight grams uh, is not how we will actually enter this answer into Blackboard though. So Blackboard has a very particular way in which it will allow for you to enter stuff in scientific notation. And that particular way is that you have to use a capital letter E. So um, in Blackboard speak, this number ends up basically looking like 4.0 times 10 to the 8 gets translated as E plus 8. So Blackboard you can imagine it saying uh, the mass of water uh, which the tank can hold so which the or I guess it's water tower can hold is and then here's the actual box that Blackboard will give you to put an answer in and it asks in grams. So in order to enter this number into Blackboard, the way that you do it is you put 4.0 E 
plus 8. And there should be no spaces anywhere in this number. And the E must be a capital E. You can't use a lowercase e. Turns out if you use certain other programs like WebAssign, for example, which is, uh, you know, th that's where the practice homework often can be found. WebAssign actually wants a lowercase e. So you're going to have to keep track of that. That's one of your jobs if you're dealing with multiple systems is learn how the system uh, interprets scientific notation or learn how to input scientific notation in whatever system you're trying to enter an answer into. So for Blackboard, you go with a capital E and no spaces, 4.0 E plus 8. So that's how you answer this question. Okay, so now we're going to look at a few examples which are primarily there to uh, double check your understanding of scientific notation and um, basically to apply the slightly more rigorous treatment of how you determine the number of significant figures. Um, so this first one is just a pure significant figures and scientific notation question. It doesn't even really ask for scientific notation. It says determine x to the correct number of significant figures. Here's some algebra problem. x equals this. So if we go through and, and add each of these in turn, uh, if you add these two together, 25.7 plus 0.3 would get us uh, 26. 0, then we're subtracting 6.1 from that, so you end up with 19.9. You're adding another 98 to that, so that gets us to 117.9. Then you're adding another 4 to that, and that additional 4 uh, basically gets us to 121.9. So x is equal to 121.9, right? Well, it wants us to do this to the correct number of significant figures. So that's where the real challenge in the problem is. And if we pull up our, um, our rules for figuring out how many significant figures there are from our notes, uh, what we see is that if you are multiplying or dividing, then the final number of significant figures should be equal to the number of significant figures in the least definitely determined of the factors being combined. What that basically means is if you are multiplying or dividing, then find the number with the least number of significant figures. Count how many significant figures that number has. That's how many significant figures your answer should end up with. If you're adding or subtracting, and that's what we actually just did do, you round to the last place in the least precise measurement. And in this thing, precision actually means um, which one has the finest or smallest significant digit. So to illustrate this point, um, I have here four numbers. And the question is, which one of these four numbers uh, is the most and least definitely determined, and which one is the most and least precise. So the numbers are 2,501, 0 0.17, 45, and 0 0.002. So which one of these is the most precise? Well, the most precise basically means, in, in essence, that you need the most precise instrument to make the measurement. And so that basically means which one goes out to the most number of decimal places to the right of the uh, decimal point. And so the most precise of the numbers is 0 0.002. The least precise of the numbers are these two numbers, 2,501 and then also 45. Uh, these two numbers are only measured to the nearest whole. 
So you could imagine, for example, trying to measure lengths of objects, and maybe you're going to measure the length in meters. Well, 2,501 meters and 45 meters means basically you got to within one meter stick length of these lengths when you made the measurement. 0.17 basically means you just measured the object as 17 centimeters, you got to the nearest centimeter. 0 0.002 is basically means that you measured this thing to the nearest millimeter. So this one, 0 0.002 is the most precise. 45 and 2501 are the least precise. On the other hand, the other is which one is most well determined or definitely determined or precisely defined or, or whatever you want to call it. That's basically another way of saying which one has the most significant figures. Well, there's only one that has the most significant figures. 2501 has four significant figures. 0.17 has two significant figures. 45 has two significant figures and 0 0.002 has only one significant figure. So 2501 is the most definitely defined, 0 0.002 is the least definitely defined. So this basically is your um, basically is your set of answers to that to keep in mind. Okay so now let's go back to this example that we've been working, we came up with the answer 121.9. But the rule says that when adding or subtracting, you should round to the last place in the least precise measurement. So which of these is the least precise measurement? Well, the 98 and the 4 are both least precise because they only are precise to the nearest whole number. These are all the, the first three are all precise to the nearest uh, 0.1 of a whole number. So we need to actually round this answer from x equals 121.9 to x equals 122. So how would you enter this in Blackboard? Well, there's two options. One is that you could just simply enter into Blackboard the option uh, the answer that we have written out here. In other words, you could, if you so desired, just write 122. Blackboard should accept that. The other option is to put it in scientific notation. So you'd have to go 1.22 e plus 2. The plus 2 is because you have a decimal point here initially. You move it over 1, you move it over 2. So those are the two ways in which you could validly enter this into Blackboard and not have Blackboard mark this wrong. Example 1.6 says that you have a certain box, it has a length, width, and height, and they're all measured in inches. And what we want to know is what's the volume of the box? So again, this, the point of this is to get the right number of significant figures primarily. The secondary point is if you wanted to put it into a specific set of units, how would you do that? So for example, the units that we might want to answer in are in cubic meters rather than cubic inches. So let's go ahead and work the example. All right, The volume for a box, V, is just the length times the width times the height. So in this case, we would have 12.0 inches times 7.5 inches times 10.0 inches. So if you throw that into your calculator, what you end up getting out is 12 times 7.5 times 10.0 or 900. So the answer here is 900 cubic inches. So we need to figure out how many significant figures there are in this answer uh, before doing our conversion. And 
we do that by looking at which one has the fewest significant figures of these three that we've multiplied together. And the answer is the 7.5 has only two significant figures. So this is 900 and there are in fact two significant figures in that 900. Alright, so the other part is that our answer needs to be in meters cubed. So we need to do some additional unit conversion. So we have volume is equal to 900 inches cubed. And for every inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. Um, and so that's 2.54 centimeters per one inch. This is inches cubed. So that means that we have to cube this because we have to have a cubed down here. We have to have a cubed up here. So we have to do this times 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54. Okay, then to get from centimeters to meters, we multiply by this conversion factor. One meter is 100 centimeters, and again, we have to cube it. So pull open the um, calculator, and what we have here says 900 and we get to multiply that by 2.54 cubed and then that we have to divide by 100 also cubed and so we end up with this number right here 0 0.014748 etc so this right here as 0 0.014748 etc cubic meters because we have two significant figures we're going to have to round off to this since this guy right here is a 7 this ends up being rounded off to 0 0.015 cubic meters and then the last thing is that we may or may not want to put this in scientific notation so if we were to try and put it in scientific notation, we would have to move the decimal place one, two spots over. So this becomes 1.5 times 10 to the minus two. So your options for how to enter this into Blackboard are that you can either put into the box uh, this number 0 0.015 or you could put into the box this number right here 1.5 e minus 2 no spaces in that number capitalize the e so there's no space between the 5 and the e there's no space between the e and the minus no space between the minus and the 2 so this right here again is the same thing as writing 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed. So that's how you'd put that into Blackboard. All right, and our last example for this uh, set of notes is this one that is basically about dropping a crown into a tank of water to figure out how big the crown is, really to figure out the density of the crown. So you mass the crown on a scale, uh, put it on the scale, it comes out as 1,425.7 grams. Then you put it into a tank of water and it displaces 32 milliliters. So this is sort of the Archimedes and the king's crown example. Is the crown made out of gold or out of something else? So the question is, what's the density of the crown? That's basically how you figure out, is it made of gold or something else? The easy way. Um, so we have to figure out what the density is, then we have to put it in the correct number of significant figures. You guys may be getting tired of seeing this equation over and over and over again, but we are going to have to use the density equation one last time. Mass divided by volume. Um, if you are tired of using the same equation this frequently in one set of notes, it is largely because it's the only one that we were given for this chapter. There will be a little more variety in the future chapters, um, but 
this is the last one, so bear with me. Uh, this is the mass, 1,425.7 grams. And we're dividing by the volume, 37 milliliters. So pull out the calculator, and what you end up getting is, uh, let's do 1,425.7 divided by 32. 44.553125. Looking at these numbers, this one right here has only two significant figures in it. This one has five significant figures. So the answer needs to be rounded to two significant figures. This digit's a five, that rounds up. So we end up with 45 grams per milliliter. So uh, 45 grams per milliliter. If you so desire, you could convert this into kilograms per cubic meter. And so this density ends up looking like 45 grams per one milliliter times, uh, basically you have one kilogram per 1,000 grams. And then one milliliter is the same thing as a centimeter cubed. So we have one milliliter here, we have per one centimeter cubed. So, so far the units that we've canceled are grams and kilograms, uh, oops, grams and uh, grams. And then we have milliliters and milliliters. So now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this centimeters cubed part by having uh, 100 centimeters per one meter and then remembering to cube it. And so what all of this is going to end up giving you, uh, if we cancel out the centimeters cubed, that gets rid of the centimeters because it's been cubed. We have 45 divided by 1,000 times 100 cubed that ends up being 45,000. So 45,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So if you're gonna enter this into Blackboard, well, it would have to tell you what units you have to put it in. So this is not how I would normally phrase one of my quiz questions because it doesn't specify the units of your answer. But if you were gonna put it in Blackboard in scientific notation, and in terms of these kilograms per meter cubed, it would say something, or you would mentally fill in the density, uh, maybe of the crown, or just the density is, here's our blank spot to put the answer, and then mentally you fill in kilograms per cubic meter, and the thing that you actually write in this blank spot is either 45,000 or you could put 4.5 E plus, and remember that the decimal point is basically starting out uh, on the left. And so you're moving your decimal point from, or on the right, excuse me, you're moving your decimal point to the left. So times 10 to the one, two, three, four. So the rest of your answer is E plus four. Again, there's no spaces anywhere in this answer. 4.5, no space at all, 4.5 E plus four. So 4.5 E plus four. So this five leaves off right where the E picks up. So that's everything that I wanted to put in today's video. I will have additional videos, basically one for each lecture set, um, at least one for each lecture set of worked examples um, for the rest of the course. So hopefully you're finding these videos helpful and thanks for watching.